EU leaders, Afghanistan need new vision with new ideas. We should build for new Afghanistan. However, the new democratic institutions had to contend with the intimidating presence of commanders and warlords who had taken part in the destruction of Afghanistan in the 90s. The new president was asked to limit their influence. Be sure that warlordism is over in Afghanistan. You may not see the signs, ma'am, but it's over. And we'll make sure that it's over. And there, too, is a good question you ask. We'll have the help of the United States to do that. So I had a meeting with Colin Powell. And I told Colin Powell, we should not, we should not revitalize the warlords. Not in favor of killing people and prosecution of people. But I am in favor of truth. I am in favor of healing of the wound of the victims. Unless we heal the wound, the wound is going to bleed. When after 2001, then we went in, and then we put all the same guys. We call them warlords. I mean, it's the guy in charge, the emir, the whoever. There's always going to be somebody in charge. What, what name do you want to give them? You're going to have to deal with them. All Mujahideen leaders, all this collection comes in parliament. And I was member of parliament and I welcomed them. Okay, yes, please. I don't know, for some reason, my face, my dress coat, my outfit was not very good for them. They, they bother me a lot and particularly with the headscarf. Whenever it was falling down, they were asking me to, sister, please put it on, please put it on. And one day I was really not in a good mood because it was a very serious debate about the law. So I just turned my face and I was badly loud and I say, this is my head and this is my scarf. Home you are in between, say. It's between me and God. It's not easy for any mother to work under the same roof because of those people that my country was destroyed and I lost my kids. But I thought if I go for revenge, it will make me very weak. It's better for me to remember what happened. So therefore, I start to work with them. Since 2002, international troops had been stationed in Afghanistan to enforce security and help the reconstruction. 51 countries had contributed to the mission under the leadership of NATO. I arrived in May and we became the first three-star headquarters in. I felt uh, that the Americans and all Westerners were generally welcomed. Um, in fact, in some cases, very, very enthusiastically. The West didn't know what it wanted to do. It didn't know how much it wanted to invest in Afghanistan. It didn't know how involved it wanted to be. It was an absolute disorganized mess. That's what jumped out at me. I once used a description. It was, you know, like us being college kids in a Star Wars bar of, or mafia run bar. We didn't understand it a bit. جامعه جهانی که دموکراسی را آورد کمک کرد برای زن حق آزادی را وسیله شد موجودیت پارلمان و مجلس های وسیله شد ای باز خلط نشوه رفتم درس خوندم 
و داکتر شدم ای یک اتفاق بود که از خوشی های زندگی ما بود بعد از دوری سیای طالبانی ما سند توابت و دست خود گرفتم تنها انتقاد ما در بخش بود اقتصادی بود که اونا بیدون یک پلان استراتژی پولاره و مصرف رسادن A period of reconstruction began. Cities, particularly the capital Kabul, benefited from the aid and investments coming in from abroad. But the money often ended up in the pockets of only a handful of people. Le salaire de ministre c'est 4000 Afghans, c'est à peu près moins de 100 dollars. Donc la question est de savoir avec moins de 100 dollars comment il a pu construire une telle villa. Meanwhile, the Afghan population was in desperate need. After decades of war, millions lacked the most essential resources. The situation was even worse in the countryside, largely forgotten by the international investments. Extreme poverty and widespread corruption triggered nostalgia for the Taliban years. These days they suck your blood. Even governors take bribes just for doing something legal. The Taliban beat women and there were restrictions, but at least there was no bribery. یک طبقه مردم یا قشر بسیار محروم ماندند دیگه طبقه این قدر کشیدن اتوار مردم هستند که یعنی یک موتر هم نداشتند یک دکان هم نداشتند یک خانه هم نداشتند حالا اگر به شما بگویم که به صدها میلیون دلار دارم ما خو بزید حکومت می بودیم بزید امریکا می بودیم هر قدری که مردم می چه خراب اونا جای به جای می کردن بری ما فایده بود هر جای ده هر ولو سوالی و ده هر ولایت که اکادمی بسیار بد و ناراز مقرر می شد از اونجا مردم پرار می کردن طرف ما می آمدند By 2005, the Taliban reorganized and the mission of the international coalition became more complicated In 2002, the war was started, but the war was far away, they were not very strong. At the time, in 2005, we had a lot of people who had a lot of people who had a lot of people in America and in the NATO, we had a lot of people who had a lot of people who had a lot of people. About 2005 and 6, my forces had some brutal battles, and I'm talking with large numbers of people doing a lot of killing. Wait, 
you're trying to tell people this this is getting pretty serious. The Taliban are able to generate a lot of combat power, and every time they can generate combat power, they have the ability to generate credibility. And then you started to see the Taliban owning the ground in areas like Helmand and Kandahar, running a shadow economy with taxation of movement of things like that. And suddenly they become the de facto power brokers in the area. The <laughs> <laughs> Great God in heaven, dear Jesus, we pray for our leadership from every corporal all the way up to the president. You know, I'm from a fairly small town in Indiana, and I had never really been outside the country. You know, I, I didn't know much about the world. And I think at the time, I really believed that we were making a difference, that we were trying to fight terrorism abroad. When I went to Afghanistan, I think it just opened my eyes how naive I was and how complex the world is. One particular night, we went to a compound. It's like 2.30 in the morning. We've woken everybody up. And I'm trying to talk to the, the woman who's kind of the head of the household. And I said, well, we're here because there are apparently pretty bad people operating in this area and we need to figure out what's going on. Um, and she basically told me, you know, why do you think you're any different than the Taliban? You come to my home at 2 a.m., you, you threaten me, um, you know, they do the same thing. What, what side am I supposed to choose? You know, she's like, if I work with the Taliban, you come after me. If I work with you, the Taliban come after me. And I think for me, that was the first time I realized that most of the Afghan people were just stuck in the middle. امی اشتباهات آمریکایی که بودند و بسیار یک فرصتی خوب بود، فرصتی کلان بود برای ما و آنها که همه مردم را ازیت میداد، ما آنها را جلب میکردند. Traditional warfare is straightforward, right? One army versus another. Um, that's what we had been trained to do. Unfortunately, an insurgency is much more complex. You don't know who the bad guy is. They don't have to wear a uniform. You could have good people, you could have bad people, and you can't tell them apart. Once we started to get shot at, we started to withdraw right into our bases. So there's no way to meaningfully connect with the population. So I think for the most people, it was easier to just hate the Afghans. And 
and, you know, stick with your own tribe, so to speak. How's it going, man? Send your hands about. Yeah. Those soldiers had a kind of fear. They always keep distance. It was not really pleasant for me to read a sign on the military vehicles that I should keep a distance away from them, otherwise they can shoot. The challenge for us was, if you wanted to win the war in Afghanistan, you had to get the support of the Afghan people. Not the love, the support. Uh, to get the support of the people, you have to first not kill them and make it in their interest to side with you. The challenge with that is, if the enemy creates enough violence and they put you in a violent mode yourself, then you have to have more armored vehicles. You tend to use artillery. You tend to do these things. You become a source of violence that kills the very people, unintentionally kills the people you're trying to deal with. These are the hostilities left behind less than 24 hours after an ISAF raid on Wednesday to capture a Taliban commander. ISAF says they succeeded, but also killed three others Afghans, the Americans claim, showed hostile intent. They opened the door and we went to see who it was. My brother talked to them in English and I don't know what he said, but they told him to stop and shut up. And then they shot my brothers. They would not allow me near their bodies and kept holding me back. I'm not sure Afghanistan was where we should have been to begin with. And the longer we were there, I feel like the, the worse it got and the worse we made it for the people of Afghanistan. We were certainly trying to impose our worldview and that's just not how it, how it works. Um, and we realized that, um, well, I hope we realized that, I'm not sure. Increasing violence between coalition forces and insurgents caught the Afghan population in the middle. The expression collateral damage became an all too familiar description for the many innocent civilians killed by accident. People ought to 